welcome to another Minecraft video. First, briefly, is the lossless wrench mode. So if you hold down the M key and you right click while holding your wrench and pointing it at nothing that you can use it on, it will cycle between disabled and enabled for lossless wrench mode. Lossless wrench mode costs a lot, but it guarantees that when you pick something up, it will not be destroyed. In fact, it costs just about 10,000 energy units, which is how much it, the wrench will store. So now, if I just go down the line here, popping these things, oops, keep it locked. So in that case, it did not seem to actually do anything, but if you go through a whole pile of solar cells, eventually you'll end up with one that has reverted to more base components. I don't care about those right now. Goodbye, goodbye. You're not important to the rest of this video. The rest of this video is all about this lovely little reactor here. Now, this is the arrangement of coolant cells, integrated heat dispensers, and uranium cells that I am using. It is a single core reactor. It has a surrounding of water. And as you can see over here, that's equal to it, one, two, so that's a five by five block around it. These are outside of the five by five block, and thus no matter how hot it gets, they will still flow. The reactor is sitting on top of a sandstone block. Uh, any solid block will work for this. Here is a redstone torch that is activating this block, and the reactor is held off because of that. Surrounding this at the moment, I have four reinforced glass blocks. Uh, you could use any type of solid block you want. I would prefer ones that the reactor does not turn into lava. Uh, these glass blocks should be replaced with wool or something equivalent, so that as soon as they catch fire, the water will flow out and destroy this redstone trace right there, thus shutting off the reactor and hopefully saving your stuff. Uh, the surrounding pit around this should be made out of reinforced stone. You need two blocks thick at minimum, uh, two blocks plus some stone around it. Three blocks will guarantee that no normal reactor will escape. Uh, there are ways of snaking your cables around so that they too are encased and have three layers in every direction. This MFSU is currently empty. These are switches that also turn off the reactor by preventing the on signal from getting to it. And here, I am going to just quickly inject one signal, and the reactor right there has now been on for a couple of seconds, so this should still be hot. It has no charge. That's great. So that did not generate nearly as much charge as I expected it would. And I might need to set up the timer so that it's on for greater than four seconds. But this loop right here, every time that I flip this switch, will allow the reactor to stay heated for up to four seconds, and it appears that there is a turn-on delay, so you can adjust this loop so that it's longer, so that your reactor actually runs for the four seconds that it should out of the total. And, oh, there's the other one. Goodbye. If I turn off this, the timer will start going around, and the reactor will run on a loop that is 64 seconds long here, and every time that the on signal reaches this, I'm sorry, every time the off signal reaches this, this will turn on, which releases this four second loop here, which you can extend as necessary to time the reactor's on period, so that it actually operates for four seconds as opposed to just receiving the redstone signal for four seconds and the reactor will, at that point, run 
and then cool off for the additional 60 seconds of time between that and when it operates next, which will allow you to run this at an average of equal temperature, but not 100% of the time. The MFSU here is set up in such a way that when it is uh, partially filled, it will turn that on, which uh, is currently on for some other reason. Why is that currently on? No, no. Oh, right. Wait. Mit if empty. Mit if partially filled. Hmm. Apparently, partially filled turns it off then. So I'm going to have it emit if full. Oops. There we go. Emit if full. Now the reactor will actually run for the amount of time that it's supposed to run. And while I'm waiting for that to go around, this gigantic setup can be accomplished in Red Power 2 by an RS latch and two timers set up like so. This timer is set up at 4 seconds, this timer is set up at 64 seconds. Uh, you could use whichever output you like. This output would happen to be the one that's configured for the reactor, but depending upon the number of inverters, you might want to take the other side's output. So now, the reactor should have just been running, and it's slowly cooling off. There we go. So it looks like the four second timing is actually effective at this point. And uh, the reason that this other block is here is the water flowing down on it would cascade out without it, which would of course test the emergency shutoff system. The alternative to this design, of course, is over there. Let's see. So it's going down in temperature, down in temperature, down in temperature. Hmm. It appears I might need to reduce the on loop by one tick or two. You could actually observe this and determine your own safety factor by how far that returns. So there I'm shortening the duration by uh, three redstone ticks, which will shorten it by three tenths of a second. This over here is the old way of doing it with a uh, four second clock there and this is a four bit binary counter toggle flip flops and and gates and it's a bloody nightmare however you could extend the on period to an even longer duration much more easily than you could this which is a 64 second clock made from an edge trigger and a loop of 320 torches or repeater ticks left some traces there in the design so that if you need to extend the period, it's quite easy to do. Here is I need to decrease the duration a tiny bit more. Not sure if that's because it was already too hot or some other event. But since this is supposed to return to zero and these should all end up without heat bars on them, it's very easy for someone to tune it even without a uh, thermometer add-on. This video is actually a lot shorter than I thought it would be. Oh, here's a, a mass fabricator you can look at as well. Fed off the MFSU.
it's going at a nice pace, but that should be running out of energy soon. Actually, how much energy did I have in there? There we go. So that right there was a full recharge burst. Uh, as you can see, the timing is set up on this so that you could even run a normal bat box off of your reactor. You could have a primary one feeding into a secondary one, and when the primary one is full, you can turn off the reactor, and the secondary one will cache whatever is left over for you. And this is actually quite safe. There we go. So now I've tuned it so that it definitely will not have a net positive temperature, and it is in fact cooling off all the way before it turns on again and reduces power. That would be a great point to end the video here. Um, I, actually, I can demonstrate one other thing. Break. That's the emergency cutoff in action. And as you can see, breaking that one flooded the entire pan and destroyed the trace without dimming the torch right there, thus ensuring that the reactor remains off and will cool down by the water that's flowing around it. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and feel free to let me know if there's another topic that would be of interest for you.